Some days you're up and other days you're down. Always tip the dealers and when your waitress comes around. Cause sometimes you punt and other times you're round. And you might get cooler to flop the nuts when you sit down. The outcome of the hand don't mean that you made it. Cause life's not about the result, but more on how you played it. Hitting eights, nines, and tens and all the painted faces. Every day you play is a win, even if you're mucking aces. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Mucky Naces Poker Vlog. This is episode 14. I'm KP and we are headed over to Colma, California to play at Lucky Chances Casino in the 3-5 game. Wish us luck. All right, in this very first hand, I pick up Ace-9 off suit. I'm under the gun and I see that the starting open is typically about 20 to $25. So here I start to make a bet of $20 and the middle position player and the big blind end up making the call. When the flop comes out here, it comes out here with middle pair for me, but a king and a six with two hearts. I'm going to continue here with the bet of $45 the middle position player ends up folding and the big blind makes the call. We go to a turn which is the queen of clubs and in the moment I'm thinking that this isn't a very good card for me but I decided to continue with a bet of $100 and the player in the big blind then goes deep into the tank. He thinks about it for quite a while here and then he decides that he is going to, of course, jam all in. So thinking about what he could possibly have here, I'm going to end up just making the fold as he really jams on me for about 780 effective and I'm really done with the hand at this point but trying to get a bit of a read on him I'm thinking that either he hit his queen or he has some form of a draw but I wasn't going to call down with simply a middling pair so he can take this one and unfortunately we will be punting away a little bit of money in this hand I think that I should have checked there on the turn card but I thought I was throwing out a little bit of a blocker bet to see where he was at but I know that I shouldn't be betting for any sort of information. While I was taking notes on this hand I picked up pocket kings and doubled up through a smaller stack but unfortunately didn't catch it. I then pick up ace queen off suit in the hijack. After a button limp, I make it 20, and the button calls, and the under the gun limper actually makes the call as well. So we go three ways to a flop with $65 in the pot, and the flop comes out ace, seven, three, rainbow. Of course, I feel pretty confident with top pair and a good kicker in this instance, so I throw out a bet here of $50, and the player on the button decides to make the call, and the player who is under the gun decides to call as well. We go to a turn card, which comes the Ten of Clubs. I don't think that this changes very much with this card coming out. I still have top pair and a good kicker. So I decide to try something new and I jam all in for my remaining $400 or so. If he does have pocket tens or a set of sevens or threes in this instance, so be it, but I'm going to go for it all here. And the player on the button decides to make the call. And the opponent who is under the gun mentions that he is getting a good price, but ultimately chooses to fold. I flip my hand over and an eight of hearts comes out on the river. My opponent does not show his hand and ultimately mucks. Maybe he had a worse ace or thought that my shove on the turn showed some weakness as he may have not believed that I had a good hand at least here when I jammed all in on that turn card. In the next hand of note, I pick up pocket jacks on the button. There's an early position raiser to $20 and then the cutoff player to my right 
decides to make the call. So I'm going to three bet my jacks here on the button and I take this one down as everyone folds. So I'm going to ask you here to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. It helps out the channel a whole lot and I really appreciate everyone in their kind comments, also their feedback, and I look forward to getting better here as I go. A little while later, I pick up ace three of clubs in middle position. With the suited ace three, I'm gonna bump it up here so I make it 20 to go. And the player who is in the cutoff does something weird and he min clicks it. He makes it 35 more to go, so the player to my right folds and I end up making the call here to see a flop. And we go heads up to see this flop, which comes out ace seven five with two clubs. So after he does this weird min click, I decide to just check it over to him and he decides on a small bet of $20. So this is really weird to me here, but I want to come along to see the turn. The turn card comes out the Jack of Hearts, and I check to my opponent for a second time. He stops to think about it for a little while, and then he makes a bet sizing of $100. I'm really confused as to what he could be repping here. Of course, he could have a stronger ace, which is very likely, but there are two clubs on the board, so I have that backdoor flush draw with the draw to the nut flush. So I decide to make the call. Now the river comes out the 10 of diamonds, and of course king queen gets there, but I'm really not believing anything that he is saying. And I do want to throw out a bit of a blocker bet here, as I don't really have much behind, but... This ends up being a major punt as he then elects to shove all in for my remaining couple of hundred dollars or so. And I, of course, have to make the call as I feel that I'm priced in at this point. So with about $730 in the pot, I flip over my ace three with just the top pair. And of course he shows me that king queen suited. So he's going to take this one down. Unfortunately, he ran into the runner runner straight there and I did not price him out. So next up, we pick up ace jack off suit in the big blind. And once someone bumps it up, I'm just going to make the call and check my option essentially here to go see a flop three ways. The flop comes out 10, 4, 3 with two diamonds. Unfortunately here, I pretty much whiff the flop, so it checks around and we go to see a turn card. That turn card comes out the six of diamonds and I decide to throw out a bet of $20 and one player makes the call. The river comes out a fourth diamond. I check and he throws out a bet and unfortunately I'm just going to have to let this one go. And in this next one I pick up ace 10 off suit and I think here it just shows that I left a little bit of value on the table. I'm in the small blind and I shouldn't really be limping in here with the ace 10 but I decide to and we go to see a flop and the flop comes out queen jack seven with two spades. I have the ace of spades here in my hand and with the straight draw I decide to check for a bit of deception and the turn card comes out the two of clubs. I check it over to the middle position player who bets out 20 and the player in the cutoff decides to make the call as I do as well. So we go three ways to a river card which comes out perfect for us which is the king of hearts. This is where I should not be so much of a filling player. I look at the table and I decide to check 
and unfortunately it checks around so I definitely lost some value here. I show my ace 10 and we are good as both players muck their hands and we take down this very small pot. In the last hand of the evening I pick up king jack off suit. I'm in the hijack and I make it 20 more to go after a couple of limpers. The button player and the middle position player both decide to make the call, so we go three ways to a flop, and that flop comes out queen jack five, and it's a rainbow board, so with my middling pair, I'm going to throw out a bet after the middle position player checks to me. I make it 45 more to go, and the player who is on the button decides to go deep into the tank, but makes a min click to about 145. So I'm really perplexed here in this situation. After the middle position player makes the call, I think about it for a moment and ultimately decide on a call as well. So we end up going three ways to a turn card, which comes out the Ace of Hearts. And although I can hit a 10 on the river, I'm thinking that this is an okay card for me, but I'm definitely way behind, especially after it checks to me. Then I check to the player on the button who jams in his whole stack for about $2,000. He has me covered and at this point I'm pretty much just out of the hand. So I rack up and go have a chat with Doug and also Mariano who I want to give a shout out to. And I appreciate everyone for tuning in. All right, y'all, that's it for episode 14 of the Mucky Naces Poker Vlog. I want to thank everyone for watching. We got into the game over at Lucky Chances Casino for $500. Unfortunately, we were felted, so we'll get back to it in the next one. Definitely still happy with the way I played. That's just the variance sometimes. I do want to give a shout out to Doug McCusker Poker. Definitely check out his channel. And if you've been living under a rock, got a chance to meet Mariano Poker as well. So if you're here and you haven't checked out their channels yet, I don't know where you've been. Uh, they definitely are doing great things in the poker space and uh, an awesome community. So looking forward to meeting up with them again in the future. Like I said, we got into the game for 500 bucks in the 3-5 and we did not get out for anything. So I'll have the numbers up here in the screen and I appreciate everyone dropping a thumbs up on the video and also subscribing. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.